Now that we have this fully connected to the system, if you take a, cl a close look, we see on receiver A, there's an LED indicator, and right now it's shining orange. The reason for that is that I know that both, the, both pairs of receivers and transmitters are actually lined up. If I break the beam on receiver A, we'll see the LED turns red. If I break the beam on receiver B, the LED turns green. If I break the beam on both, the LED extinguishes. This is very useful for us when we're actually trying to line up the receivers and transmitters if we're not in this mode where we have the receivers and transmitters uh, separated by quite some degree. Let's say, for example, they're misaligned. So if I rotate this transmitter away from there, you'll see that we're shining red. As I realign it, the LED comes back to orange. So it's a very visual feedback of, of making the alignment very, very simple. So while this, is a ballist, this setup here is meant for ballistics, which we'll talk about in a little while, it's also very, very uh, easy. It's a very clear way of demonstrating a number of the modes that we can incorporate a dual beam triggering system for various applications. What do I mean by that? Well, let me first of all attach a flash to the stop shot so that we can create events and we know when we've created those events because the flash will actually fire. So once more, I'm just going to bring a very standard flash unit, a, a very cheap Chinese speed light here, attach the RCA cable to trigger one. The RCA cable goes to the flash interface connector, which goes to the PC socket of the flash. And I will turn the flash on. And what we're going to see is that Right now, in the default mode, the stop shot will create an output trigger to this flash if either of these beams are broken. You'll see, no matter what I do, if either of these beams are broken, the flash is going to go off. But there are many other options available. First of all, if we go, I can say, we're now using both beams to create a trigger event but in this situation, trigger, I mean, receiver A must be triggered before receiver B in order for the event to take place. You see that following through, but what happens if I move my hand the other way? Nothing at all. Very interesting. What on earth could I use that for? Think about it. Let's assume we're photographing mammals on a trail at night. We have a nature trail and we have our camera set up somewhere to the right and our lighting is set up perfectly and we want to get headshots of a fox or a coyote or a deer or anything that might be traveling through, but we only want to get headshots. In this way, if the animal, in fact, in this way, let's assume our camera is over here. If an animal is walking this way, the system will fire and illuminate. If the camera is walking that way, if the animal is walking that way, nothing will happen. So we don't get butt shots. Hands up those of us photographers who have done nocturnal mammal photography. We know that if you set up a trail uh, system with a single beam, you get about 85% butt shots and 15% head shots if you're lucky. It's just a fact of life. It's a horrible fact, but it's a fact. With this, you get dual benefit because one, you will only get head shots. But think about it. If an animal is walking along a trail, it breaks a beam and a flash goes off, you're going to see that animal freak somewhat and it is likely to bolt and probably not return to where the camera be, where the camera setup is. You freaked it out, you've got your butt shot, that was your one chance, it's gone. If instead you have a dual beam system and the animal is walking in a direction that is not favorable to your setup, nothing happens, it's likely to return along that trail and photograph itself. That's an implicit benefit of using dual beam systems. But I digress. Okay, we may have our setup where we want to photograph it this way, but we put our camera at the wrong end so we can actually change that. Now that I now have beam B must be broken before beam A, so that if I go through here, nothing happens. But if I go this way, we fire the camera. So it's exactly the same as before, but just switched around. So that's B to A, we fire, A to B, we don't. Now we're going to go A or B. This is kind of the default mode where that will trigger, that will trigger, both of them will trigger. So if 
any beam at any time is broken, we get a, a, a shot. This can be used if you're looking for maximum opportunity to create events, animals going either way. Um, there are many applications for that. Now we're in a situation where if we go this way, nothing happens. If we go that way, nothing happens. If we break any individual beam, nothing happens. But if we break both beams at once, we get a trigger. So both beams have to occur, they have to be broken at the same time. Typically when you use this configuration is when you have a cross beam. So you can create a beam in this direction, a beam in that direction, so that any animal, be it a moth, a flea, a tick, whatever, something very small where you need pinpoint focusing accuracy, anything flying around that breaks an individual beam will not trigger the system. It's only when I'm pre-focused on the intersection of those beams, the beams both broken at the same time, I know I will get my animal sharp in focus and the system will fire. There are other um, options too. You can have individual beam only, even though you have two beams, we can have A will only fire, B will only fire. And then the last mode is ballistics. This is a lot of fun and this is a really, really cool application of dual beam technology as well. Because what happens is, a lot of us, certainly myself, I love photographing impacts of things like air pellets on substrates and watching things blow up. I mean, any good photograph includes an explosion, right? Any impact of an air pellet or a bullet hitting something requires precise timing, really, really precise timing, down to microseconds. A really good example of why this setup is necessary is that if we are using a CO2 powered air pistol or air rifle, because while it may seem to us that when we pull the trigger that pellet fires out quick and it fires out quick every time, in fact, the velocity changes with every subsequent shooting because the pressure of the CO2 canister slightly reduces, the actual velocity, the muzzle velocity of the air pellet is less and less each time. If we have set up a um, trigger system based on timing of a single beam where the air pellet breaks a beam and I say, okay, I'm gonna fire the camera half a, or 500 microseconds later, the bullet is gonna be here for the first exposure, but then it's going to be here for the second because it's actually traveling a bit slower, a bit slower, a bit slower. So I can't really focus on a particular spot because it's going to be changing. The ballistics mode of the stop shot system with dual infrared beams operates in a different fashion. Thanks for watching.